And faith is of the Spirit. It's not of the flesh. And see, we try to get people to believe God. Well, if you'd just believe God, if you'd just have faith. Well, you can't just have faith. It's a spiritual thing. You got born again because the Spirit of God convicted you of your sins. And you recognized one day the Word of God came to you and the Spirit of God came to you and planted this seed in your heart. And when this seed was put in your heart, it says that we're born again, not by corruptible seed, by the incorruptible seed of the Word of Almighty God. And the Spirit of God came in and planted that seed in your heart. And faith came in and you were born again, praise God a new creature in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. And now we're still born again. That seed is still producing in us. Amen? And it's by faith. We're living by faith. And nobody can take that away from you because the seed is in you. And nobody can tell you you're not saved. You know you're saved. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You confess that you're saved. You know you're born again. You know that Jesus is your Lord. You're not afraid to say Jesus is my Lord. You'll say it when you don't feel saved, and you say it when you feel saved. You say it in church, or you'll say it in the marketplace. I'm saved because the blood of Jesus cleansed me. Amen? Am I right? If you've been born again because the seed went into you, praise God, and it took root, And it it gave you everything that God wanted you to have pertaining to the new birth. So I know I'm saved, praise God. But see, that's the way faith works in everything. The seed has got to be planted in your heart by the Spirit of God. And you say, well, how can that be? Because I'm trying to get the seed. No, no, you're not. No, let's be honest. If you want the seed of healing to be planted in your heart, you know what you're going to do? The same thing you did when you got saved. You're going to seek after God. You're going to do what He says. You're going to read the Word of God. Now, I'm not talking about reading the Word of God so God will be pleased with you because you read your two scriptures today. I'm talking about you're going to dig in here and say, Father, I want to know. I want to know. What do you say about healing? See, there is nothing, nothing that can, that can convince me that healing is not for every single believer. Not only every believer, but Jesus bore the sins and iniquities of every single person on the face of the earth. And he bore their sicknesses as well. There is nothing that you can say or do to convince me that that's not the case. That seed has been planted in my heart. And I know that I'm healed. I know that I'm delivered from this present evil world, praise God. Because Jesus implanted that seed into my heart. And I know beyond a shadow of doubt, faith is in me spiritually in me. I'm not trying to get faith. I know that it's in me. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because the Spirit of God planted it there. I remember when, after I got saved, I had backslid. Actually, I got saved when I was around 14 years old. And I backslid and went back on God. And then when I was 20 Four, I came back to the Lord. I repented, came back to God. And then not long after that, my, my sister, she was here yesterday, and brother-in-law were holding a Bible study, and I went, and there was a group of about 10 or 12 people there, and he, he was teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I remember we gathered around, people were praying in tongues, and everybody's praying with me, you know. And I'm just not one when I'm in a group, a lot of times, you know, when everybody's praying different things, that I can really grab hold of it. But anyway, I was praying, and I mean, if anybody said, are you believing? Yes, I'm believing. Are you wanting? Yes, I'm wanting this. Well, speak it out. I'm speaking it out, you know. I mean, I was doing everything that everybody said to do. But you know what my problem was? I wasn't convinced. The Holy Spirit had not convinced me. But one day, it was probably two or three weeks after that, I was reading where it says that 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 tongues is for the unbeliever and prophecy is for the believer. But if an unbeliever comes into church and I'll speak with tongues, he'll think you're mad. And I say, there's a contradiction. (laughs) Right there within three verses, a contradiction. He said that tongues is for the unbeliever 
And then he said, if you're in a service and all speak with tongues, the unbeliever walks in, he'll think you're mad. And I'm studying that and I'm reading it and studying. Now, this is what I'm talking about, getting faith put in your heart. This is what I'm talking about. Instead of just going to church one time and letting somebody pray for you, receive the baptism and speak in other tongues and then walking out and say, well, I just didn't get it. Dear God, I went to church many a times and didn't get saved. But then I finally came back and that word and the Spirit of God connected and praise God, Spirit revealed. All of a sudden, the Word of God was revealed to me. Well, I was sitting there in my living room and reading and all of a sudden I read and it said, if an unbeliever comes in and all speak with tongues, they'll think you're mad. That word all looked like it was that big in my Bible. And all of a sudden, the Spirit just came on me and said, I said, if all speak with tongues... Tongues is for the unbeliever because you is an unbeliever. <laughs> and I got, I, I, I remember, listen, this is, I, I promise you, I closed, I was sitting in my rocker in the living room. I closed my Bible and set it down beside my chair. I walked in my bedroom and knelt down beside my bed and I lifted my hands up. <laughs> Glory to God. Because the, the word of God was implanted in my heart. I knew the other scriptures about the baptism in the spirit and speaking in tongues. But I wasn't receiving because this one thing was hindering me from receiving. And God revealed to me and convicted me of what the Holy Spirit was, who he was and what he was for. And faith came in my heart. And when faith was put there, do you think there's anybody that's going to convince me that tongues is not for us today? Absolutely not, because I received it through the uncompromisingly, un infallible Word of Almighty God. Amen. The truth of the Word came into my heart. Faith came in, and praise God, it was a spiritual thing. Yes. It wasn't because my flesh decided to hear it. It's because I kept digging and digging and digging. And Jesus said, if you seek, you will find. Yes. Praise God. And there's a treasure in here that we haven't run. I'm telling you, there's stuff in here we haven't got yet. Praise God, because God's waiting on it. He's saying, Kathy, if you'll just study a little bit more, if you'll just dig a little bit deeper, I'm telling you there's stuff in here that you it'll blow your mind, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me, let me, I'm going I'm to give you a thing that the Lord gave me last night. Faith is the substance of salvation which comes through God's grace. The grace is God's word and promise because of his compassion through the completed redemptive work of Christ. In other words, when it says we're saved by grace through faith, it's because of God's mercy and compassion through the redemptive work of Jesus. That's what his grace has given to us. And we are saved through the spiritual act of faith, when the Spirit of God shows me that, that I am saved, the thing that I'm hoping for, I've received by faith. It is mine. There is nothing that's going to convince me it doesn't belong to me because I see the completed work. Is that not what Jesus did when he was talking about the parable of the sower? Did he not say the sower sows the word? and the Word is put in somebody's heart, and if the Spirit of God has put that Word in somebody's heart, the Satan comes immediately and tries to steal that Word that was sown in the heart. And see, if somebody hears the Word and they're not seeking God and they're not after God in any way, but they're just going to church one time and they hear it, and then it just falls by the wayside. But then you get to the good ground where somebody's seeking after God. They've been wanting Him. They've been seeking after the truth. They want to know what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. And that seed gets into that heart. And the Spirit of God takes that seed and plants it in that heart. And praise God, faith springs up at that time because it's spiritual. It's not mental. It's not something just because I want it that I'm going to get it. I've got to seek after God. Jesus said those that are just out here, he said, why don't you reveal this to everybody? Why don't you just explain it? Why are you talking in parables? Because if they see it, they might get it. 
and they're not even wanting me. All they want is the loaves and the fishes. They just want something so they can say that he's, he's going to give me all this good stuff. All this good stuff he's going to give to me. Well, praise God, he gives you the good stuff. The good stuff is the spiritual kingdom of God. The good stuff is peace and joy and righteousness and faith and temperance and long-suffering and having compassion for people. That's the good stuff. And Jesus said, I don't want these people to get it. They're just after loaves and fishes and gold and silver. You're not going to get faith. The faith that will see you through in every situation if you're just after the gold and silver. Amen. 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 Turn over to Jude real quick. Amen. Praise God. How many of you have read the book of Jude here recently? You have? It's one that you don't hear too much about, is it? The only thing, I think the only thing that's ever preached out of the book of Jude is um, uh, that, that the Holy Ghost, you know, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And that's a good scripture to go to. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. I heard Brother, brother Hagin said this so many times. He said, he said, folks, we've not been pickled. So notify your face that you're not pickled. You're preserved. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you, and peace, and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Earnestly contend for the faith. Because it's of the Spirit. I could put in there all the things of the Spirit earnestly contend for joy, earnestly contend for peace. Because, see, if you don't have joy and peace, the world is watching you. And they, they want to see something that's different. Yes. People at work, and I, I haven't worked a, a secular job like this in, in a long, long time where people made fun and tried to tear you down, but I've heard about it many, many times where people, if somebody takes their Bible to work, they're, they're harassed. And, they, you know, people harass them and try to get them to, to, you know, I'll put it this way. They think they're trying to tear them down. But you know what they're after? They're after something that works. Now listen to me. They're after, Kathy, something that works. The people around us are taking drugs and alcohol and doing sexual things, perversion, all kinds of crazy things, because they don't see anything that works. And we're the body of Christ. We're the Lord Jesus here on the earth. You understand what I'm saying when I say that? We're, we're Christ here on the earth. Jesus told us we're the light of the world. He wants us to show men what walking in the Spirit and the power of God's all about. Yes, he wants us to be healthy. Yes, he wants us to be wealthy. But our first thing is we need to have peace and joy and faith and love. That's number one. Because if we're not seeking after those things, that's all the world wants. That's the reason that they're taking drugs and drinking alcohol and doing all the crazy things they're doing. Because they know there's something missing on the inside of them. And that thing is God. And they're making fun of us because we're not showing what that is. And when people are at work and they bring their Bible to work, and, they're, and one thing, you shouldn't even bring your Bible to work. You know, if you're reading the Bible when you should be working, then, then you're, you're cheating. You should have the Bible in you. And when somebody asks you anything, you need to know the Bible says to, that you should have something inside of you that tells every man why you've got the hope that you've got. 
And so we need to be full of the Word of God and full of the Spirit of God to where when we're talking to Him, you know, Paul said, said the letter I'm writing to you, the epistle I'm writing is me. Yeah. said, I don't need a letter of commendation. I don't need somebody to write me a letter and, and give to you and say, you know, we recommend Paul because he's such a good guy. Man, that's that, gee, he, he said the letter kills. In other words, if you have to have somebody write a letter about you and showing how great you are, then, then you're walking after the flesh and you're walking after the letter. My life is who I am. Praise God. And see, that, that's who you are. It doesn't matter whether good or bad. That's who you are. So see, when, when people are making fun of people at work and condemning and criticizing, the reason they're doing that is because they want something that works. They want to see if you will do what the Word of God says you will do. When you're reviled, you revile not again. That's what the, the 1 Peter 2.24 is all about. He said Jesus was reviled, but he didn't revile again. He was cursed, but he didn't curse back. And see, that's what people are looking for is somebody that will stand up and just say, I'm a child of God. I don't care what you say to me. You ain't going to get me riled up. Because I've got the love of God in me and I've got peace like a river flowing out of me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I am not going to get upset over you. You're not. I better not say that. I say, say you're not worth getting upset over, but Jesus thought they were. They are worth getting upset over, but I'm not going to. I'm not, it's not worth it to get upset over that. Amen. Praise God. God's word is spirit. And life, according to John 6, 66. It is alive and powerful. It is a living and powerful seed which will produce after its kind. So see, the Word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith is of the Spirit. The Word of God is of the Spirit. There ain't nothing in this book that's of the flesh. And see, we're trying to get something of the flesh out of a book that's spiritual. You know why they couldn't keep the law? Because the law is spiritual. It was given by God. It's a spiritual force. There's nothing wrong with the law. What was wrong was us. And we couldn't keep it because we're flesh. We had to be born again. We had to be alive in the spirit. We had to be changed to be able to keep the law because it's spiritual. And if I'm looking at it as a flesh thing, then I can't do anything about it. I'll break it every single time. But when I walk after the Spirit, I'm going to have love, joy, peace, faith, long-suffering, temperance, gentleness, meekness. Praise God, there's no law against any of that. I mean, it's of the Spirit. And I'm going to walk in holiness because it's of the Spirit, because God is inside of me. Amen? Praise God. So if God's in me and he's holy, guess who's holy? Maggie said yesterday, we are complete in him, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So praise God, we're going to walk by faith. Amen. I don't know how long I've gone, but let, let, me, let, me, let me share this. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 36. And we shared this the other day in our new believers class. Real quickly, and we'll, we'll go after this. You know the Bible says that in Christ Jesus there's neither Jew nor Greek, male or female, you know, bond or free. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Once we receive by faith what I've been talking about and we walk in the Spirit, listen to what God told Ezekiel. In verse number 4, Ezekiel 36, 4, he told, he told Ezekiel to prophesy. And this is what Ezekiel said. Therefore, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea, 
which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart and with despiteful minds to cast it out as for prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains and to the hills. Now, I'm, I'm going to go on, but remember now in Ezekiel 37, remember the valley of dry bones? And we love to read about that, don't we? We love to prophesy to the dry bones and say, Come up, dry bones. Come together. Skin, get on these dry bones. Breath, come into these dry bones. Well, this is what God is telling Ezekiel to prophesy to the land, to the valleys. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because you have carried the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the city shall be inhabited. And the waste shall be builded. And I will multiply among you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginning. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess you. And you shall be their inheritance, and they shall no more henceforth bereave them of men. Now look at verse 15. Neither shall I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more. Neither shall thou bear the reproach of the people any more. Neither shall thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. Verse 20. And when they entered into the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. This is God speaking now about why this land was the way it was. And he said, when Israel went into the land, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land, they profaned the name of the Lord saying that they were the people of the Lord. And it profaned the name of the Lord. But I had pity for my holy name. God said, I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes. I'm not doing this because of you. I'm not making this land beautiful again and, and so it'll build up the waste houses and, and, and cause everything to be good again because of you, because you profane my name. 23, And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. You ready to be sanctified? Yes. You ready to be made holy? You ready to let God just take complete control of your life? Because God wants to make his name great. And we need to want to make his name great. And everything we do, that's the reason when we come in here, we don't come in with a spirit of heaviness. We put on a cloak. We put on the armor of God. We stand right upright. We're the light of the world. We're not going to put our light under a bushel where it'll be hid. We're going to walk in the light. And we're going to walk in the, in the power of God and in the love of God and let His name be great. For I will take from among you the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols and why will I cleanse you. Now, we read this when it comes to the new birth. But this is what he's talking about when it, what happens when the new birth comes. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. God sent Jesus because we profaned his name. 
And Jesus had to come and said, I'm going to make my father's name great again. I believe he had a cap on that said, make God's name great again. <laughs> Amen. God's trying to do that right now, make America great again. <laughs> Praise God. But I'm telling you, when Jesus came, God said, you've profaned my name, and I'm going to do something about it. And if you'll listen to me, and you'll get born again, and you'll allow my spirit to walk in you and talk in you, and you will receive my blessings and walk in the power of God and walk in everything that Jesus came to do for you, redeemed you from the curse of the law, redeemed you from poverty and sickness and death, redeemed you from all the filth of the world, caused you to walk in holiness and righteousness, caused you to walk in a way that God is proud to have you as his name, and you're going to walk in that, and the land will even come before you and yield its fruit. Praise God. The unrighteous will begin to give. The heathen will look and say, God is among you of a truth. But they are looking for somebody that will stand up and proclaim the truth and say, I've got peace and joy and love. My heavenly Father gave it to me. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. The heathen are looking for you. And we have got to be what God has called us to be. Yes. Born again children of Almighty God and not ashamed to proclaim that I am a child of God. The Spirit of God is in me. Yes. If you want this, you can have it. Bless God. Yes. And so if somebody looks at you and say, well, I just don't want what you've got, man, you better check up on yourself. Because yes. <laughs> we got it. Amen? That song, I've got it, I've got it. Something about that Holy Ghost I can't explain, but I've got it. Amen. And see, they need to want what you've got. We need to be salt so they'll be thirsty. Amen? I'm not talking about just having a mansion or having a nice car. Praise God, that's part of it. I mean, if you're, if you're going around with ball tires and, and, and an old clunker that's a 1932 model that you can just barely get to crank all the time, and you say, let me tell you about my God. You know? I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But bless God, the main thing, the main thing that people are looking for is joy. Yes. I'm telling you, joy. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. There's more mentioned about joy than any of it. Praise God. And see, we're, we're walking around the mully grubs all the time. Y'all know what mully grubs are? Uh, yeah, okay. We're, we walk around the mully grubs all the time and, and go into Walmart and say, you want what I got? You know? I mean, we got to go in with, a, with joy and peace and something that they desire. Because, you know, we've got it. L listen, we've got it. We've got it. Yes, we got it. We do. We've got it. We've got healing. We've got deliverance. We've got prosperity. Everything belongs to us. There is nothing that God left out of his redemptive plan. Praise God. So all we got to do is get a mindset that's right. And when we get our mindset that's right, then we'll walk in this thing that God's given to us and walk in the spirit. Praise God. Amen. Jesus, Jesus.